What's up, people? It's your boy Jatois, and I had this crazy thought yesterday of what would happen if I took White Knight and I mixed it with a shuttle? And this is kind of the weird idea I had. Now, these are not mounted directly to the craft by the wings. Trust me, that would shred the entire craft, no matter how much space tape I used. Instead, there is actually a fuel tank that goes between the two and the shuttle sits on top of that fuel tank and everything else is then in line with the shuttle. So you have a linear shuttle. And this allows me to have a extremely easy liftoff and it's so simple to get to orbit. You know, you do have to use a lot, a lot of space tape. AKA struts since we we still have you know the strutting issue and craft can tend to be a bit wobbly now since the game is so early on I must stress this I must stress this emphatically don't go changing your values because it may hamper the progress of the game getting corrected and I may have inadvertently guided a few people to do so but if you do modify any of your settings and you are reporting bugs at least make that note in your report saying okay i tweak some settings in my physics file so that being said if you need to regenerate your physics file you can always delete it and when you run the game it should be recreated so easy peasy but I usually keep a stock copy off to the side. That's why I don't delete things too often. I usually make a copy. And so it's, it's kind of the safer way. Anyhow, back to the game. As you can see here, the shuttle really sits on top of that fuel connector. And all of that is connected with a single decoupler. And that radial decoupler is literally the only thing connected that shuttle to its launcher so that being said I use a lot of struts to get this beautiful view once we hit orbit and that allows me to have a super stable liftoff and here you can see when it separates it looks so awesome here you go I just ran out of fuel with it and boosh Oh yeah, there you can see a good visual of how the connectors work and all of those struts that I used. So that brought us over to the moon. And this is where the fun begins because when you're coming in, super pause, super unpause. <laughs> I am still gonna say that every time. When you're coming in the moon this way, uh, you have two options. You can come in like I did hot and you can land on your tail. Just make sure you're not going too fast when you land on your tail or you're gonna smash things and you're gonna have a hard time on re-entry going back to Kerbin. So this method here that I use is a bit more chaotic. Other people tend to go retro burn and then they'll flip over at the last second onto their wheels. So as we come down for a gentle, gentle touchdown and then a little boop to the tail, and then a little fall over to the wheels. I had a bit of a scare here as the craft seemed to want to bob side to side and I was really, really hoping it did not destroy any of the wings on there, but the wings appear to hold up quite nicely. So I went ahead and just kept going. Now, I found something quite disappointing is that the hatches are done. It seems similarly to KSP-1 where it is on the side, but if you have front canards like I do here, well, you can't get your Kerbal out. <laughs> so I, I did put in a bit of a suggestion to add in a front exit or a top exit hatch so that way even if we use canards we can get our Kerbal out no matter what. So can't can't plant the flag decided I guess it's time to explore a little bit and then realize I don't really have the fuel for this <laughs> so I decided to go on back home to Kerbin. This is where I ran into actually the first bug in this entire playthrough 
and this was probably about an hour of playtime, including the build and the launch and orbits and all, and I only ran into one single issue. That one single issue actually was the maneuver planner, and coming up, you'll see, I had quite a bit of trouble with it, and it, it kind of, you know, brings me to the point, yes, KSP is having some trouble with a lot of things at the moment, but the game itself is still fun. Why do I keep playing it? Because it's fun. Is it kind of frustrating at times? Yes, yes it is. It is quite frustrating at times, but it is fun. So you'll see here what was happening, and this is actually the third take. What was happening is it was saying that on my maneuver, I would burn off about 900 <laughs> Delta V, and I had about a thousand or so. That's going to bring things really, really close, and that is not exactly the margin of error I would like. <laughs> so I decided, okay, um, I'll just do it by, by eye. And secondly, whenever I pointed myself towards the maneuver and would do my burn, it kept pushing me retrograde. Retrograde is definitely not the direction I want to be because that takes me back to the moon. So I decided, once again, I'll just do it by eye, set myself prograde, get to maneuver, and then punch it, and then just eyeball it until I got close enough to the planet uh, to get an actual orbit and escape the area of influence of the moon, and then go and do my capture with Kerbin. Could I have done it all in one shot? Probably, but I couldn't find a fuel efficient way of doing it. So this was the best bet that I had and it played out really well because I only ended up burning about 500 Delta V and ended up with about 400 left to spare. So this gave me a really fantastic shot at landing this craft since there's only one place you can land right now. Uh, I've been scouting around trying to find other bases on Kerbin and there's just that one. So I went ahead and took it and that's when I found something absolutely glorious. You know, besides the fact that, you know, the, the heating effects are not in the game yet, so I can do some really funky insertion maneuvers. Um, you might, I did the reverse pancake, which every time I say that, it sounds really bad, but I swear to you. Uh, it's just when you nose down and flatten out things, so you can kind of bring your, uh, your targeted landing area kind of better where you want it to be. And I was actually able to get a target very close to the Kerbal Space Center. So that being said, I was like, hey, maybe I can nail this landing back at the base. So I'm typically a not extremely patient person when I'm coming back from the moon and I want to just land and get back to doing whatever I'm going to do here. So I kept using, you know, the, the physics warp to get me to where I'm going to go a lot faster. That's when I found that if I physics warped while I was gliding in, it seemed to extend my glide quite a bit. Um, sure, this is probably an aerodynamics physics warp issue, but it worked in my favor, so I refuse to call it a bug. I will call this one a feature. Physics warp glide. Physics warp gliding feature. And I would like for that to kind of remain even though it is kind of cheaty. So I was able to use the last bit of my fuel, the last bit of my Delta V to actually line up my shot on the base. And I love the fact that it comes into view so much quicker now. Uh, so I was able to kind of glide in and just continue to use the physics warp glide to guide my craft in. There's no fuel, just gliding in <laughs> with those big, beautiful wings that I decided to slap on. And it worked remarkably well. <laughs> I was able to actually pull it off and uh, swing back over and come right down on the base. And this was where everything was on the line. You know, was I going to go all the way to the moon park and not be able to get my flag to all come all the way back and crash? Or can I stick the landing? And... I've done plenty of landings, so this was absolutely 
kind of a run-of-the-mill landing for me, to be completely honest, and was able to stick the landing. I really wanted, you know, something like air brakes to help that out. Um, without air brakes, you can kind of use control surfaces. You just have to kind of, you have to put them backwards. And it's possible in the game as it is and then set into an action group to both deploy at the same time and then you can have like an air break because you're now you're pushing against both directions at the same time um it works but i did not set that up in this craft so i just went in and just burned off as much as i could and came for a nice easy gliding landing this was a lot of fun I, it was a complete bummer that i couldn't get out and plant my flag but this is a complete win for my linear launcher. And, you know, if they decide to modify the White Knight and make it so it will, it can go orbital, then that would be even better. That would be awesome. And it was funny as I, I actually saw that Matt released a video of his airborne rocket launch. And um, I totally, I totally think his design looks awesome as well. But hey, I guess we have similar ideas at similar times. I just have less time to do my voiceover editing. 